cannot not overstate enough how important speed is to the long jump. Hello, I'm John Shepard, and in this short video, we're gonna discuss something that's fundamental to all long jumpers, and that's just how fast do you need to be to jump far. Everything being equal, the faster you are, the further you will jump. So what do I mean by everything being equal? Well, your technique, your run-up speed, and your takeoff. Fundamental to distance is your approach velocity and your speed over the last five or so meters of the run-up. It has to be said that in the case of most long jump athletes, there's a difference between being able to run 100 meters and take off at maximum or optimum velocity in the long jump. 100 meters is a specific skill. You need to have more speed endurance, the ability to sprint at top speed for longer, you also need to have a good reaction and a good accelerative phase. The long jump, however, requires you to take off from optimum speed over a distance of about 25 to 40 meters, depending on your age and ability. When I was an athlete, Carl Lewis was one of my heroes and he, being a sub 10 second sprinter for the 100 meters, was undoubtedly the quickest long jumper there was around at the time. And I've looked into it and I'd have to say that to this very day he is still the fastest long jumper that ever took part in the event. He will be taking off well over 11 meters a second coming into the board or at least two to three steps out from the board. The next person that I found to match that and I have some direct figures for this is Dwight Phillips who similarly approached the board at 11 meters a second but I don't think neither Lewis nor Phillips used their optimum speeds at takeoff. Both of them mitigated their takeoffs to account for their greater speeds. I mention that because it's important not to always see your 100 meters ability as your run up speed. You may well be able to generate more speed over the five meters into the board faster than what you will be able to do when running 100 meters, i.e. at 40, 45 meters so potentially you'll be able to run faster on your run up if you are a specifically trained long jumper. In pulling together this video, I revisited the statistics produced by the IAAF from the London 2017 World Athletic Championships and specifically the men's and women's long jump finals. I found out that in terms of the two gold and silver medalists, that's Luva Mayonga and Jarian Lawson in the male event, Mionga was running into the board at 10.52 meters a second and Lawson at 10.60 meters a second and the times were recorded on the penultimate step, not three strides out or on the takeoff step. The takeoff step is usually the slowest one in any case, but it was interesting to note that for the majority of the finalists, their fastest speed was generated on the penultimate step. And in terms of the women and Factoring the speed in on the third to last step, Brittany Rees achieved a velocity of 9.32 meters a second and second placer Daria Klashina 9.21 meters a second. Interestingly, third placer Tiana Bartoletta achieved her top speed on the second to last stride very similarly to the male jumpers and her velocity on that step was 9.51 meters a second. Bartoletta is obviously the quickest woman in the field over 100 meters, so it could be an indication somewhere that the faster you are, the more you can generate speed closer to the board. But as I said, I need to look more into that. Interestingly, I also discovered some research on Dwight Phillips from the 2009 World Athletic Championships in Berlin, which he won with a leap of eight meters 54. And his approach velocity on the penultimate step was 11.16 meters a second. And this is from a man who's ran the 100 meters in 10.06 seconds. I believe these figures make him the fastest long jumper of recent times, at least as recorded through bona fide research. Now, most of us everyday athletes and coaches don't have access to the type of recording equipment that the IAAF had. We may have the ability to time 10 meters, flying 10s, on the run-up or on the track using, for example, a free lap system. 
Now when you're running 10 meters on the fly, milliseconds count a lot when it comes to your time in meters per second. So for example, if you ran 0.92 milliseconds for your flying 10, that would result in a time in meters per second of 10.86. If we recorded a time of 0.90, that would result in a meters per second velocity of 11.11 meters a second. And at the slower end, 0.98 for your flying 10, would result in a time of 10.20 meters per second. Many years ago, I came across some research from, I believe, East Germany, which was then translated by some West German sports scientists, which looked into predictions as to how far you could long jump given a certain 100 meter time. Now, this research also took into account technical efficiency and the power of the athlete at the takeoff. So those two are crucial factors, as well as, of course, the speed. And if the technical ability and the power of the takeoff were maximized, it could result in roughly about a 3% increase in the distance jumped. And conversely, if you had poor takeoff power and poorer technical ability, you jump a lesser distance, which I again believe was circa 3%. So everything being equal, the Germans predicted from 100 meter time what you would jump optimally and on average given your 100 meter velocity. At the time, many years ago, I always thought how accurate or potentially so these figures were. I'm going to put up on the screen the 100 meter times and the distance correlations that the Germans produced. But I'll go through a couple now. 8 meters 50, 10.25 seconds. 8.02, 10.65, 7 meters, 11.50 seconds, 6 meters, 52, 11.9 seconds, 5 meters, 82, 12.45 seconds. And as I indicated earlier, the research factors in this 3% or circa 3% ability to jump further or jump less, depending on your ability to be able to take off and your power at the takeoff. So you could be slower and jump a bit further. Now I've somewhat simplified the research, believe it or not, in that the Germans also used flight time and the depth of landing, for example, i.e. how far the feet were extended in front of the body as a means to further calculate the total distance that a jumper could jump. So they'd not only look at speed over 100 meters, technical ability, takeoff power, but also flight time and landing depth, as they called it. So it's quite calculative, but as I've indicated, if you plus or minus about 3% on those 100 meter times, you will get a very good figure as to how far you will be able to jump. Now, this was one of the most complicated videos to make in terms of getting across the data and the research that I've discovered. And I hope you do understand the importance of speed and how you can relate your 100 meter time and your 10 meter fly time to potential distance jumped. I cannot not overstate enough how important speed is to the long jump and in particular maximizing your velocity over the final takeoff steps. As I've indicated women seem to generate top speed three strides out from the board and men too. Nevertheless you have to keep thinking that you're accelerating all the way through into the takeoff. Thanks for watching and good luck with your training and competitions and do subscribe to the channel and leave any comments you may have in the section below or through my social media. And do subscribe to the channel for exclusive community content. Just arrived at Loughborough University for a talent identification day with England Athletics and I'm going to take you through a couple of the things that we do in brief over the weekend. The first practical session was a technical one and it was monitored using the OptiJump system. Jonathan completed a number of full run-ups without a jump, not shown, which we will use to assess his takeoff velocity for example. He then jumped off of about 10 steps working on various aspects of technique as feedback was given from other coaches. One thing that we did get feedback on was Jonathan's step and the height of the free leg. Some of the other coaches commented that he should lift it higher 
and that the aim should be to go higher through the phases, although in reality this is not practically possible. That should be the mentality, the approach to going through the jump. This should set him up for better positions and create greater length throughout the phases. Once the detailed data becomes available, I'll hopefully show you how we implemented the findings and also what some of the data means. After this session, all the coaches met to have a roundtable discussion on their athletes and the technical aspects that they wanted to focus on and work on and we all gave feedback which will hopefully help each other. And day one concluded with a discussion about functional movement screening and the tests that the athletes will perform the next day. And if you'd like to find out more about the free lap timing system which I've been using throughout my training recently, drop me a direct message.